transport the oil and the products, and it owns the petrochemical industry uh, company. And it's because during that period, the 70s and the 80s, where the producing uh, countries became more or less liberated from uh, these uh, seven sisters or major oil companies, but the major oil companies uh, still play and still do play now an important part in, uh, in the oil industry because uh, I must say, and I have all admiration for them, they have been able to transform themselves to be able to be on top of the technology and the management of the oil industry so they have become uh, indispensable players in, in the energy and uh, the oil scene. Uh, in 1983 and 85, the Kuwait Petroleum Corporation be began to expand uh, by uh, buying <coughs> downstream marketing facilities all across the world, and particularly in Europe. Uh, I don't know whether some of you know this the Q8 brand, which is uh, a brand of about 5,000, 6,000 gasoline stations all across Western Europe. Uh, they are present in about 30 to 40 airports, as well as many diesel stations and, and many refineries. Uh, and in 1985, 87, uh, Kuwait Petroleum Corporation started a huge investment program, both in producing oil and making the refineries uh, more modern and more sophisticated. The crude oil produced by Kuwait is, is not is not very good. It's a little bit heavy and it's, it's a little bit sour. When we talk about sour, that means it has contaminants, particularly sulfur. So Kuwait took a decision to have uh, a lot of money spent on refining so that it produces very good products that meet the requirements uh, of the environment uh, worldwide. In 1990, as you probably know, uh, Kuwait was invaded uh, by Iraq and uh, uh, at the end of the invasion, there were uh, 700 plus of wells and fire, and the oil industry faced, faced a huge task of, uh, number one, extinguishing all these fires, number two, recovering the operations both in the upstream and in the downstream. And, and that took a huge, uh, a huge effort, of course, in 1991, 92, and 93. In 94, Kuwait took the major step of, of, of uh, joining in a joint venture uh, a big petrochemical uh, industry here uh, with what was Union Carbide, what is now Dow, and I think uh, we are all very proud of our joint venture with Dow Kuwait. The plant is very well run uh, and it's uh, extremely profitable and beneficial for both of us, uh, us and Dow. What are the challenges in front of us now that I have given the historical and present perspective of the oil industry in Kuwait? Well, the oil industry in Kuwait uh, is in, in the unenviable in, in position of, of having to uh, make sure that there is a steady and maximized revenue coming to the country. Uh, because the economy depends on the oil industry, it depends on KPC. So they do that by trying to diversify the, the, the source of, uh, of income. Sell crude oil as crude oil, uh, refine a lot of it and, and sell it as products. Be present in the downstream in many, many countries where you can reach the final consumer, to the people who go to the gasoline stations, who go to the diesel stations, to the airports, etc. They also have a big challenge because they are always under the mic microscope because of the accident and our industry, if, if, if some of you do not know, is actually uh, very dangerous and it's accident prone and usually the environment people are not very happy with the oil industry. And it's a very tricky part to play both uh, in, in, in terms of public relations PR and both also in terms of technically being able to, to limit or to eliminate uh, the pollution that comes from uh, our operations. Uh, of course, the oil industry here is, 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 is also asked to support the economy, to, to, to support the private companies, and, and be seen 
as a big player in, in, in having a vital economy and, and uh, no matter what you do, you you'll still be taken to task to be able to, to, to do your part of that. So, uh, usually uh, there is, there, there is uh, a lot of focus on the industry and, and how it's doing and what it's doing and whether it's doing enough for uh, the community in general. Talking a little bit in numbers, where 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 does uh, Kuwait want to be in the future? It wants to remain a big player in in, in OPEC and in the world as a big uh, producer. Kuwait produces about three million barrels a day now. Uh, th there is of course a huge amount of reserves. The reserves are around 100 billion barrels, so they, they should be anyway. There should be enough for me, my children, and my grandchildren. You know, that's the extent to which. Uh, but, but for 50, 60, 70 years, the oil will be here for sure. Uh, Kuwait has plans to, to increase the uh, production from 3 million barrels a day to about 4 million barrels a day by the year 2030. Uh, in the refining part, Kuwait wants to increase its refining capacity so that not, the oil, not all of the oil is, is sold as, 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 as a crude, uh, crude oil. So uh, they have a plan to, to have about a ha one and a half million barrels a day of refining capacity. There is a big, huge refinery that's planned to, to be built, uh, called the, the fourth refinery project. And it has the, the other advantage of being able to take the dirtier crews and change them into environmentally friendly projects. Kuwait is a little bit late in the petrochemical industry if, if it is uh, compared to our neighboring countries like Saudi Arabia and uh, uh, and the United Arab Emirates or, or Qatar. So th they plan to have more plants in here and probably to make some investments uh, abroad. The petrochemical industry, by the way, is in the part uh, that produces just about everything that we see in life. That uh, the, 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 the material produced from the petrochemical industry are things that go into the production of clothes, plastics in all their forms, bags, nylon bags, uh, uh, medicine, uh, and many, many, many other uh, products. At the same time, Kuwait has plans and actually uh, uh, started implementing some of them of buying a lot more uh, product and crude tankers. <coughs> this has uh, uh, Two advantages. Number one, uh, the obvious one, of course, is the, is, is the economical advantage. But the more important one is the uh, uh, strategic advantage. You you want to be able to have ships under your own control, because as you know, the the Gulf area is really well. It's not the safest place in the world, and there are always many things that that happened. And I remember in the late 80s and during the Iraqi Iranian War, we had a lot of. Uh, a lot of tankers refused to come to this area because of, of, of the uh, hostilities. And actually, if we did not have our tankers under our own uh, ownership and our own control, uh, the production and the export would have come uh, down a lot. So that is, again, a very, a very strategic and important part. In, in uh, the investments downstream,